So we have the smoker, uh, it's arrived, and uh, what we're waiting for is the metal cart. So I wanted to show you in the meantime one other thing that I got that I think is really amazing. Uh, this is the Flame Boss 200 Kamado Wi-Fi. It's made for the Kamado, and it's a fan that will keep the temperature in your Kamado, either your green egg or your uh, the uh, Kamado Joe, or you can show it actually shows you all of the uh, brands that it supports over here. Uh, I'll put it up to you so you can see. So the point is, and uh, what it's basically a fan with a controller, and it hooks up to the Wi-Fi um, of your house, and you then can log into. Uh, basically, it's logging into the uh, Wi-Fi of your house. It, it connects to the Flame Boss website and dumps the data that it's getting from your Kamado onto its onto the website. You then can log into the the website uh, into the uh, the website address, log in, and then you can see the temperature in your Kamado, the set temperature, the temperature no, just the temperature of your grill. It'll show you the temperature of the meat, and uh, you can actually adjust it. You could be uh, you could be in Florida, and uh, you have your smoker on in New York, uh, and you can adjust the smoker from Florida. Why you would do that, I don't know, but uh, most of the time you might want to adjust it from inside your house. Also, amazingly, it, it interacts with uh, uh, Alexa, the um, Amazon uh, device you talk to, you can ask questions. Alexa will be able to tell you what the temperature is of your grill and of your meat uh, with this device. It's really amazing, and uh, I was telling my, showing my friend this, and he's like, you know, this is what capitalism really does. I mean, you have a company working to solve a problem for you. I mean, in, in, in a socialist country, no one is going to develop this and put the effort and the stress and the uh, risk of a product like this, um, what, to make, to get nothing? I mean, they're not going to do it. I mean, here, it's really an amazing company. I called the company. I had a suggestion. I was, I was, I'm used to this fan thing from the Rectech. If you have the Rectech smoker, it has a fan, the controllers, and the, the fan modulates how hot it's going to be so uh, to keep the temperature um, constant. Uh, and I called up the company. I had a question or two. The guy answered the phone. Really nice people. I think it was Fred. Lovely. I mean, really nice. Answer the questions I had. And I want to show you about this. I had a few comments about it. It's really excellent. Um, so it comes with this. It comes with an instruction booklet. We don't need that. It just tells you it works best by keeping the vents almost closed. Because you want to keep it closed because if it's not closed, then you're going to have a natural drift that's going to defeat the purpose of this thing. You want to keep it almost closed so that's the fan that's providing the draft. Um, so it comes with a couple of things. It comes with this uh, controller, which is great. It do it doesn't come with screws. If you see on the bottom, I'll try to get you a good view of that. Now, if you see on the bottom, there are screw holes. It doesn't come with the screw holes, but you can just put in, take this off, uh, and screw in a few like. Uh, metal screws into some into the like the metal cabinet I'm getting I, I don't know if I'm gonna do that I may just keep it like that just lay it down it's pretty heavy uh, so there's fourth on the bottom you can see there's a couple of connections uh, there's the first is for power this is power out is the fan then there's pit and then there's meat that's two uh, if you look over here and everything is really nice. I have to tell you, very long wires. I don't know how long it is, but maybe like seven, eight feet. I don't know, six feet, something like that. But it's very long. And you just plug this in. This is the the meat probe. So we're going to pl pl plug that into meat. And then there's the pit probe, which grabs onto the pit. Very smart. Let's see, just... And that plugs into the pit. Okay, so here's the fan. If you look closely at the fan, it's a fan. I mean, it's made out of plastic, but this stays far out of the, uh, far away from the Kamado. So it's not going to get hot. And this is metal, and it's blowing in, so it's blowing cool air into the Kamado, so it's not going to melt or anything. Uh, it is pretty sturdy, it's metal. And they give you 
a few plates. And the plates hook up to the Kamado. I'll try to show you that later if I can. Hooks up to there and then this just, just kind of like hooks in, kind of gets stuck on there and that stays. That's what I think anyway. It seems to stay. Okay, so a couple of things that I noticed. Um, I saw one or two other videos on this and I bought it. One of the reasons why I recommend this over, I think there's one made by uh, CyberQ and a few other companies, is that this is the only one that I know of that actually can, that has a fan that can be, that the rotations per minute of the fan can be controlled by the computer. In other words, the other ones, the fan's either on or off. So when it's too cold, it'll blow the coals, the fan turns on 100%, blows the coals, and keeps it, and heats it up. And when it shuts off, when it's too, when it's too warm, it shuts off the fan. And uh, it'll do it again, it'll go on and off. This one, this fan is different. This fan, uh, it'll, the computer can say, I'm turning on the fan 20%, or 40%, or 80%, or 100%. Uh, when it's first cold, it'll try. To, it'll turn it on 100%. But if it doesn't need that much heat, it'll just turn it on maybe 10% or 20%, just to mod, just to keep it warm, keep the right temperature. So it's really able to hit those temperatures and keep those temperatures, rather than having to turn on and off completely. It'll just turn it on, let's say 20% or 30%. Um, and the computer has an algorithm; it knows all that. Um, the other thing I, I would just point out: I'm looking at this. I haven't seen this. What does it say? Uh, a little hard to see. It's also scratched. 12 volts outputs, 12 volts. It looks like 12 volts DC. Um, so this is just a 12 volt thing. So what you could actually do is if you um, don't have power by your uh, smoker and you want to use it, uh, you could either get the have a battery version. Or what I would do is this. I would just get this connection. Uh, plug it in there, cut the wire, and then you can connect this. Just cut the, I wouldn't even cut the wire. Keep this, buy another wire with that connector, and wire it directly into a 12 volt battery. Now you can get a 12 volt rechargeable battery, say from a burglar alarm system. I think it's about $20 or so on Amazon. They sell those burglar alarm, the uh, NICAD batteries, they're big, they like, I don't know, maybe six inches by four inches, and uh, they fit in your burglar alarm system. Keep it going in a in a power outage. You could just connect this this, this wire to that, and that would be fine. I mean, in a pinch, you could connect it to a car battery, but that seems like a little overkill for me. Um, but I'll show you how this works, and uh, I just wanted to give you some tips because I had something of an issue in terms of setting it up. And the reason is, if you notice on it, it only has three buttons. So, um, it's a little tricky putting in the password, and I'll, sh I'll tell you what I mean. Okay, so when you're putting in the password, you have to keep pushing this up and this down until you, for each letter. Now, you're scrolling through all the letters of the alphabet, first capitalized, then all the letters of the alphabet, underscore, uh, I mean, um, lowercase, then you're scrolling through all the numbers, and then you, 0 through 9, and then you're scrolling through uh, all these characters. So you're going to do a lot of scrolling for each letter that you're putting in here. And the problem is, um, and then while you're doing that, it's also blocking out the letters, uh, like some kind of security thing. I, I, I mean, they're really big on security for something like this. I mean, they're just protecting your, your, um, your router password. So what this is going to do is, so it's kind of confusing. You'll see it's being it's covered up as you go, and you have to so much scrolling. You're bound to make a mistake, um, and I did make a mistake. It took me the third time to get it right. So what happens is, uh, if you put in let's say the wrong password, it's going to go. It's going to try to connect to your router because you're choosing your router first, and then it'll say logging in, and then it's going to skip it. It'll just like stop. And then it's going to try to, it's going to say logging in to FB. And then if it's the wrong password, it's going to say um, resetting. And then it's going to go again, try to logging into your router and then logging into FB. Now, I thought FB was the, was the Flame Boss website and that it actually was, that it actually was working, but that's not the case. What, the way it works is um, it, 
if, if it gets the right password, it goes in. But if it has the wrong password, first it tries logging into your router um, with the password you put in. But if it can't, it then goes looking for a router named FB. So that if you can't figure this out, if you can't deal with all these scroll, all this scrolling, um, and I recommend actually you put a piece of paper there with your password, and each time you do a letter, you cross it off, so you know you're getting it right. Um, so, and so the, if it can't log into your Wi-Fi, then what it does is it'll try to log into it'll to a router named FB. So what you could do, in other words, if you have a problem logging into, if, if you can't do the uh, password here, you just can't get it, you have the option of not touching this and going to your router and renaming your router FB. So if you rename your router FB and you choose a password, this has a built-in password for, F, for an FB router, it'll just connect to your router. So you don't have to touch this. You can just go to your router if you want to, if you have an extra router, name it, name the SSID um, FB, choose the password. It gives you the password in the book that this is set up for, and it'll automatically just connect to that router without having to touch this, and it'll log in. Okay, so what I did was I did it three times, and finally was able to connect to my router. I, I think it probably was my, my fault. I probably didn't mess up the password. But after the third time, I, I was able to log in, and um, the beautiful thing of this is it just, it, the first thing it said is updating firmware. It looks for firmware, so they're able to update this baby. So they, um, they able to, so the, it updated new firmware, and uh, it started. And then you're able to easily see this on your phone or your iPhone or your, my Samsung or uh, whatever. So it's really great. I mean, I think what the only thing I'd recommend is on their website. They should have the all the recommended temperatures for like meet, medium rare, this, that. So when you're plugging, so when you're programming this as to what you need, you can easily see that. So, but let's take a look. Here's the fan. Uh, we got to plug the fan in. And uh, I don't know if it can read, connect to the Wi-Fi from the garage, but we'll take a look at it. Let's see what happens. So, okay, so it says Flame Boss 1.89 or something was the version of the firmware. Now, it says over here, it's set to 225. And that's probably standard to what most people are going to set it to. It says now the pit, which is really just this, is uh, 59 degrees. And it says the meat one, which is touching the concrete uh, floor, is colder. So it's at 47. So the system now, it's gearing up. It's keeping the fan at 22%. It's starting at, it's going up to 26%. And you could barely hear it, but you could feel it. And you could see it. It's gearing it up. And I guess it's gearing it up because it wants to see what the feedback is from the coals. So it'll start it working its way up. If it sees the temperature is rising, if the algorithm sees the temperature is rising fast, then it's not going to gear up to 100%. But here it's, it's not gearing up and it's not getting warmer, so the system is going up to 100% to try to blow those coals to get the heat up, to get the pit up and... Um, then it'll be able to lower the fan. As the pit gets hotter, the fan's going to get lower. And that's really all there is to it. It's brilliant. It just works great, and it's very easy to use. And because you're logging into the Flame Boss website, it's brainless. I mean, you can't mess it up. You could set a timer, meet alarm on. I have an alarm so that if it goes above 225, it'll beep. I don't know. when It'll send me a text. Meet on temp at 193, that's how, if it, if it varies more than 20 degrees from what it's set, it's gonna, it means there's a problem and it's going to send you an alarm. And it knows in the beginning it's not going to send you an alarm because you just turned it on. Um, but it will send you set an alarm if something goes off, I guess if you run out of coal fuel. Um, Wi-Fi on. Next year, 99. I don't know if it's able to join from here, but it says the status, the password, 
see everything is blocked out so when you're typing it in it's a big pain in the neck but you only have to do it once the LCD contrast temperature scales Fahrenheit open pit pause now I set that to three minutes the open pit pause means when you open the pause when you open the pit it's the temperature is going to drop and it's going to know it's going to say open the pit open and um, what that's going to do is it's not going to turn the fan back on. In other words, while you have the, the pit open, you don't want the fan rushing and blowing air in uh, while you're trying to take the food off or whatnot. So what that's going to do is, um, let's just shut this off. So what that's going to do is that's going to give a pause for three minutes. And even when you shut the pit, it's going to wait out that three minutes to see, let the temperature get up. And then when it's stable, the fan will turn on if it's still not hot enough. So, oh, all right, so it's, uh, we'll take a look at it. Let me just see what this is and uh, we'll take a look. So now the, the just to show you how it hooks up. This is going to go over here, and uh, it's one of these plates, not that one, probably the bigger one. Basically, you fit the plate in there, and this fan goes like that. And uh, you, you want to close that to block it off. And it's just hard to do it one handed, but this fits in here. If I can, if I can get it on. I just it's a, it's a two handed thing, but basically this is gonna fit in there, and uh, that's gonna blow the coals from the bottom. So like that, and. What's nice is if you have any questions, you can just call them up. It's really a nice company. So uh, while we wait for the, uh, the cart to put the uh, Kamado Joe on, uh, at least we, uh, we're going to get everything else set up so we'll be ready to go. So I really recommend this. It's, the, the Flame Boss is really great. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, just watch a lot of YouTube videos. It's all on the Internet. And uh, you'll be able to see how it works uh, or post a comment.